platform that we held every week uh, that we have school in session here at Carnegie Mellon Silicon Valley. And we have people of all sorts of uh, interesting backgrounds that can teach us about uh, computing and technology. So sometimes we have entrepreneurs or people from Xerox Park or SRI or Stanford. Uh, today we have a homeschooled uh, kid. And um, what happened is uh, Eric uh, was one of the people in a um, science fair uh, competition that I was judging uh, for uh, San Mateo County, I guess. And I uh, just, just really had uh, a lot to say that I thought was exciting. Um, and, and also about what is possible today with, with the kind of normal uh, available resources that everyone has. And I think that this is um, a real game changer for, for how things can proceed for, for, uh, for students and can allow um, students that, that have the ambitions that, that you know, the, uh, the old inventors of, uh, uh, that had chemistry sets in my day uh, can do today. So um, anyway, I think you guys have read his bio, but I just want to present him with a, a book bag because books are good even in today's world. And there we have a it's Carnegie Mellon, the first uh, thing that you've been given from a, from a university probably. But Eric, thank you for being here. And, uh, Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Selker. And this is my first presentation of this, and so feel free to put out any questions if you have any. And does this work? Yes, it can. Yeah. To ask questions, you will push the button in front of you on the black microphone. Oh, that worked to me. So, so, um, so first I'll go over a little bit about me and why I like doing all this stuff. and. And I'll talk a little bit about about um, about some projects that led up to this um, this project I'm here to talk about, and I'll talk about a little bit about uh, some parts of it, and then talk about how I'm doing all this stuff and how you can too. And so I I I when I was really young, I liked reading all sorts of uh, books about plumbing and stuff, and 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 I didn't just read them; I also built uh, some contraptions and even ones my backyard and then I wasted so much water that my parents got me a pump and then I started making things that recirculated water and then I got a bit interested into vacuums but in general from all this stuff I learned that that uh, about a little about water flow and about water um, oh, um, about water pressure and pumps and filters and about water circuits and how they recirculate water and then waste and all this I started applying to electronics, and I was really interested in electronics at a young age. And I and I went to um, this, and I found about this place called Jameco, where you can buy all these parts. Like you might wonder where I can get this, and where I can get some of these parts, but you can get them at Jameco. And so I got some parts and built a little circuit that uh, that blinks two LEDs alternately, and it made perfect sense to me because the, the capacitor there that could be like a um, like a water bucket and resistors there are like little squished parts of pipes and said it wasn't enough all this and I went and made my own PCB for this and that's what it looks like. So that's a little about me and I'll I'll tell you a little about some projects that I did that led up to this project and and so. So I'll talk about this electric car I built with two of my other friends while they were in third grade. And so, so pretty much it's a full um, or a thing that's big enough that two of us, at least at that age, we could go into it. And 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 I built a lot of electronics. And, it, and the day I got it working, this is what it looked like. I had the two motor controllers, and then I also had um, a little dead man switch and the motor controls were controlling uh, motors on the back. And it led us a battery to power it all. And then I brought it to Maker Fair, and I put this box on it, and also uh, put some added interior lighting, and all sorts of other stuff. And from all this, I learned that you can pretty much do anything if you split it into small enough parts. And so, like I start out with motor controllers, and then and then attach motors, and then I and then I found the motor controllers couldn't handle that power, so I ended up rebuilding them, and then. And also found that it, little fans can't really cool things down too. And so then, when I was 10 years old, I built 
a maximum power point tracking solar panel battery charger. It's pretty much um, state of our uh, solar panel battery charger thing that um, that um, that charges batteries uh, based on the on the. I mean, I don't go into much detail on that, and not on that. I don't have any time. Um, so, so, uh, um, so, uh, then here. This is a project I did in fifth grade, and so I I took that same charger type um, or thing I did uh, in when I was ten, and I I I took it and and I and I was trying to make it even more efficient, and so I I I took the um, so it. Pulse is current through an inductor, and so I, I took the inductor, and um, and and so the inductor they have a resonant frequency, and I was testing pretty much if you um, if you uh, change the pulse of modulation, you um, basically send pulses at a certain frequency and change the width of them. I tried to decide if if you change the frequency of that, uh, if that makes it go faster. And finally, this is something that's actually really uh, directly uh, important to my project. So here, this is a little. Um, so this is a, a. Um, so this is a, a little sensor. So it's called a Marg sensor, which, which uh, is a, a magnetic angular rate and gravity sensor, which uh, pretty much it senses the orientation of it. And it's if you know about an IMU, it is the same as an IMU except with a magnetometer on it too, so it can sense relative its orientation relative to north instead of just where it started. And so I'll give you a little demo of that. So, uh, there. so here this is here this is uh, so here I have this little so here's the little sensor board which has a 3D accelerometer, 3D gyro, and 3D magnetometer on it, and then and then it takes the the um, <clears throat> then I have all the all that data going to some processing on the on the Arduino. Then it is going off uh, to uh, um, and it's sending it's turning into serial data and sending over Bluetooth to my computer, which is then rendering it on the display. And I'll go into a little bit more <coughs> detail on how it is uh, on how it is uh, 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 converting the data from the sensors into uh, um, uh, orientation. So. So here, um, so it um, so it does it does this thing um, this technique called sensor fusion, which is pretty much you take all these different uh, all these different uh, from all these different things, um, so um, and it puts it together into uh, one thing using a common filter. And so, and so why as you might ask why not just use an accelerometer? The problem with accelerometer is it can't first of all it can't really measure rotation. It can tell if it's straight up or down, but it can't tell if it's what orientation it is in, and then, and then you wonder why not just have a um, have a gyro and an accelerometer. And the problem is that gyros they drift, and magnetometers have other problems too, like they have a big delay. And then, and here I'm using quaternions, which is a special way you can represent orientation. And so there, now well, I'll go on. What what is a quaternion? A, a quaternion. I guess I can. Go and <laughs> unhide all these this big section of slides I made earlier. Okay. So now, so uh, common filter goes back. <laughs> I've, I've thought of pretty much every single thing. <laughs> Not everything, but so a common filter goes back and forth between a prediction step and a Measurement step, and so it measures all the sensor data. Then it tries to predict what the next measurement will be, and then that's the prediction part. So there, it does. It's not so sure on what it is. Then it represents those in Gaussian curves, and uh, and then and then it goes, uh, and then it, uh, or, or then it, uh, or then um, then then it goes, and then when it's time, or when it's time, it predicted that measurement. Uh, or for then it goes into um, a weighted average, and then that is what it calls a current measurement, and so that's how you get the orientations. And there are two ways you can uh, uh, present those orientations. And so the way you, uh, it um, OpenGL is they use these a, um, uh, angles called Euler angles, and, and uh, next I'll talk about quaternions. But so Euler angles are very simple, and just are pitch 
yaw and roll. And I, was, I got Keynote to crash. Oh no, I didn't. There. Couldn't crash. It was something different. But so I have a pitch and a yaw and a roll. And then quaternion, um, and these have several problems. But so quaternions, um, they, um, it, um, so they're, so they represent an, a, a, a vector's angle, and then, oh, it disconnected. Okay, so they, uh, so they uh, represent a, a, a quaternion, and um, or a quaternion uh, is a, a, a basically a. Uh, uh, angle um, or uh, angle um, or a bunch of angles represented as a vector in 3D space, and are you showing my screen? So I'll check on the webcast. So uh, let's get through this again. Oh no, this is the wrong thing. So so pretty much uh, then you take um, a quaternion, you take that vector, and you and you plot the x value uh, for it, and then you or and you do the sign of that and so it's a lot more complex. Just it's harder uh, than uh, than a uh, than a normal Euler angle. That's why we use uh, Euler angles more. So I won't go in. I've already gone into too much depth. Yeah. And oh, I guess I might say why you'd want to use But So uh, so Euler angles. So other angles they have problems or like if they're perfectly straight up, it says oh it's straight up but what in the world? I don't know. Um, oh, what? Okay. Let's skip that. Okay, so now that's now I'll actually talk about uh, about my current project. Is everything working? Um, so. So I'm not done. It's a work in project, and um, or pro, um, uh, in, it's a work in, uh, in process, and and so uh, so uh, pretty much this is what I think it might look like when I'm done, and okay, yeah, it's boring. So everything's different. Okay, so so this um so it pretty much is a or it will it will be a robot that um, some map perks and and so it and so uh so I um or so I'm I was inspired to do all this by my street view and Google's self driving car. Here's the picture I took and and this looks just like a normal car except um or and so Actually, uh, so so I was inspired to do all this by uh, Google's uh, self-driving cars, and they and they uh, and and of course I don't like just seeing all oh, that's really cool. I also like building it. So um so here the um so that little you know, notice that little sensor at the top of the car that costs about double the total cost of the car itself, and that's that's why only Google can do it <laughs> pretty much. And well, otherwise, it's pretty much a normal car with a couple extra other sensors. And 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 so I was really inspired by that. And 
I decided it would be cool to map something other than roads because Google already has that. So I decided I would I would try and map parks, and and so that's pretty much why and to do that. And also also then it means that then the scenery is preserved for um, future generations and also people like people that are disabled or just then I can go and, and to go into Yellowstone again. But so um, so I'm so I, I pretty much took this project and I've divide it into small pieces like what I did before and so and also I'm building them as little proofs of concepts like just little things like this instead of having a giant uh, giant uh, robot and and then also it means it's way cheaper and also also then I can do multiple versions way easier too and so I'll, I'll um, show a little about uh, the Panoramic Camera platform and so so pretty much, um, I was thinking. So you keep the cost down by using point-and-shoot cameras, and and then I could use cameras, C, um, Canon cameras. This you can use, um, you can um, put CHDK on them, which allows you to trigger them remotely. And also, you have to use wide-angle lenses to not have like 50 of them on there. And if you use their widest-angle point-and-shoot camera, it takes five of them. And so I'll demo this little thing I made, this little webcam that. Uh, that uh, that will point in, always point in one direction, and I'll tell you later why I want to do this. Not just because it it it, it will uh, uh, make it not as bumpy, but also so here it points in one direction. You know, just no matter what way I point it, and I'm using a third servo to tilt that way, but otherwise you can use pretty much the same code except to make it a bit less jittery too. And that's what that looks um, like. And so, why am I doing this? Pretty much is because. So, if you think about it, in the ro in your robot going down a path in the park, then it points in different directions all the time, and then and then it uh, and then and then it, it it is taking all these pictures at different angles. And so, I'll just take the last two pictures. They look like that, and and then if you go and take those and mark what way is north on them, and then uh, and basically roll out the panorama pictures, then um, then notice that north is in way different places. And these these are fairly close to each other, uh, so it's not that big of a difference. But if I were to choose two other ones, it could be like there and way on the other side. And so the bottom line is you have to realign every single image to um, to make it uh, so you can put it together into one big map. And so with this with this setup, pretty much uh, you don't have to do anything because it it's always in the same direction. You don't have to rotate anything. So that makes it a lot easier. And then if you uh, if you go and do that, then it ends up looking like that. And Norths are always in the exact same spot, or whatever direction you choose, and so they're always aligned, which is the bottom line. So there, that's the panoramic camera, part. and so I show this little uh, um, about how I'd have it balance, and so so said so I'd, I'd use two wheels because it's more maneuverable, and this is uh, this looks like uh, or this is very similar to well, exact same as. Um, if you're trying to balance a broom on your hand and and all that, and I'm using the IMU same thing as what I used before uh, uh, to keep it stable, and also I'm I'm using this uh, this algorithm called PID control to balance um, to keep it balanced, and so it it's uh, it's fairly steady, and PID um, pretty much is what makes it work, um, and no, I don't have to take the presentation with that one. Uh. Okay. So I don't know if I can. Get it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this uh, the algorithm is actually pretty easy, but finding the constants for the PID is kind of hard. Yeah. So it 
almost can balance it all all the tests over is just finding the constants for PID. Uh, a lot better than the last time you saw it. It actually can balance a little bit. It's just very Eric, when when you let me hold this before, that was a really could could let me feel it. Oh yeah. I should just put that on and it'll work. Okay, so this uh, it's very complicated to tune the constants, and here it is one constant which is related to the distance, uh, and that makes it kind of hard to write that far on. Eric, when if you hold it in your hand, if you pass around, people yeah. can actually feel it trying to fix itself. There, that, that's a nice thing. Now put it the way, see it goes that way. Things I've changed it so now it. It actually adjusts and it'll try and balance. Yeah. Show it going the other way. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah. So that way it tilts up. It goes that way. That, except a little bit more than that, too. Like, flip it that way then. Yeah. So it works. When, uh, and so what, what's left for doing that is I have to tune all the constants to get it. Is it, uh, and this PID is the actual. The actual, uh, the actual, um, uh, the actual algorithm is just some multiplication, but finding the constants to multiply sub phi is really hard. And so I decided I would use this because it it makes it again it's very maneuverable, and then also use um, also this I end up using Lego parts here is an earlier version that didn't balance because the motors weren't fast enough. But PID is is so the robot is tilted, um, is pretty much take the tilt of the robot and you want to get it to go and 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 balance. So if um, so um, so so you could do this by just multiplying a constant, um, or you could try to do it by just multiplying a constant by how tilted it is. That's the first thing you think of. But it turns out that Let's it overshoot, and then it will oscillate back and forth, and then use this. Uh, the so you add. Uh, so you add. Uh, uh, oops, kinda, right? Um, so, uh, so I uh, so then you add a. Uh, then you add a a. Uh, and then you add a, a value that's um, that is proportional to how fast it is going, and. And that's uh, called the uh, derivative, and that's the change in the error. And then, and then the problem is that then it, it might just sit there, like if it's on a slant, then it might just sit there and not really actually get to the goal state. So then that's when you add an integral, and that's and this is the only thing that really is um, really is uh, relative time. And, and here I'm just I'm I'm uh, for integral I'm. I'm using the distance it has since the beginning, and that's why it's kind of complicated to um, to test too. Um, so the question is, how do we pick all these values? And it's hard, really hard. Right, so now I'm in the balancing platform, I'll tell you about about vision system. And so so the problem with the paths is there's not really any well-defined, uh, really any well-defined. Uh, uh, Boundaries is um, like the streets are always lined on the sides, and also, also uh, it can change. Uh, or if the weather is different, then everything looks completely different. And I think first I'll start out with wheelchair accessible paths because they're more level. And also, I'm thinking I might use the connect, but the problem is it doesn't because it is it actually is projecting light out to go, and then it analyzes reflections. It doesn't work well outside. But but I'm think I'm hoping that this will make it easy to uh, to have it go down um easy to it, have it go down path. So here's here's a, a path and and so it doesn't really have any well defined borders like I said earlier. And then also there are obstructions like the tree there. 
And then also there's uneven terrain, like it starts going uphill a little bit. And also there are routes in the path, too, which you have to take into account. And then it's dark under the trees, and so there are a bunch of things you have to you have to uh, take into account for, and then decide where the path is, and then you have to decide where to go on the path, uh, too. And I never took out these cards. Okay, okay now um, we have to go through this again. It's the slides that's about structured light. And, and then. And almost done. There. OK. Now I'll show you a little bit about this in a demo I worked on. And I might have to wait a second for Xcode to show up. So here in the meantime, while Xcode is showing up, I'll show you a little uh, demo thing showing what the data looks like from here. So here. This, I just turned off color because that makes it kind of, uh, it makes it go really slowly. But here, this is actually a 3D view of the room. So here I'm rotating it and you can see me in there. <laughs> here I am. And so with all this data, you can uh, take all that data and then, and like here, I wrote this, I, I modified this little demo arc. A this little demo that finds the closest point. Like here, if I go here, it should there. It's putting, it's finding closest point, and it's it's putting it on the little box there, and it's finding my hand. So that's pretty much all I've gotten to do with the connect. I got it two weeks ago, so I haven't really gotten to do much of that. It's, this is just a thing, an accessory for the Xbox 360, and you get that, and then you it comes with a little connector, and you just plug that into a computer, and it and then you install some software and it just works. And let's connect. And then I'll talk about particle filters and how. So now that you have all this data, I'll show you how you can take that data and try and figure out where you are. And so this is pretty much you. Uh, um, so how this thing works is is it spreads a bunch of particles randomly all over the all over uh, the all over where it thinks it is and. And, and then they also have uh, orientations, which I don't represent here. But, um, so those uh, uh, diamond, uh, kind of diamond-shaped uh, boxes are, uh, um, they, they represent uh, points at which the robot knows its distance to. So the robot is in the center, the blue triangle, but it doesn't know that. It's trying to figure out where it is. So it, so it throws all these points around here. This is 10 points. Normally, it's thousands of points. and and it knows its measurements uh, to these different places, but there can be some error, so that's why it has to do this. And then, well, and then let's say it apply. Um, then uh, does it, is it applies all these, uh, all the sensor values it gets to other dots. And so that one is not a very good match, but this one here is a good match. And it applies all these weight, um, all these things, and it turns into weights that applies to these particles. So see the particle very close to the uh, the uh, robot has a higher chance of surviving to the next sample cycle. So then it moves all these particles and finds out that one happens to be in the same orientation of that, and it moves these all. So in this case, it's going forward some distance, it moves them all forward that same distance. And so after a while doing this and resample and distributing new particles and getting old particles, uh, it ends up with a very accurate location or uh, idea of where it is. That's pretty much applying to the vision system thing. And then I'll go over a bit of path planning thing. So you know, you could do a simple search algorithm that just goes through 
all the like uh, this goes through all the different uh, um, to the whole park and decides where to go. Or you this other this special algorithm called A star, where um, and, or you can also use uh, dynamic programming, which is another technique. And I'll go over all these. And so simple search it is very CPU inefficient, uh, especially if you're searching like where to go in a park, and so it finds the most efficient route. So here, uh, I'll show you a little bit about what it does. So all these blue spots are spots where a robot could be, and the white it can't be. And so the way it works is it has a list of, of spots that are open, and then and then it goes and puts those, and then it starts putting start on the open list, and then it goes and decides there anything on any or um, on any uh, side. And in this case, it'll start top, and then uh, right, and then down, left. And so it finds something on the bottom, and then it goes and uh, then because the next thing on the open list, it goes there, and so on. But then it gets a little bit more complicated when it gets to here. So it finds there's something on the top, so it adds that first on the open list, then it adds the thing to right second. So then it goes to the thing on the top first. And this is this is wasting CPU cycles right here. It's just a whole park that would go and search like down random paths and random places. So then, so go on to how it does. Then uh, then there adds those other two spots on the open list. So it turns out that one is now the it was, uh, and then it goes into the same thing again and again, and eventually ends up finding the end. But it it takes a while. And um, there, so I'll 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 show you a star. So it constrains the efficiently constrains where it is searching to the, um, and also it finds the most efficient <laughs> the most efficient path to the goal. Assuming the heuristic function I'll tell you about, about later is optimistic, and that means it's less than the actual distance to the goal. So and here I'll. Is for a heuristic function, um, heuristic function, uh, just straight distance to the end. So just like here, or right next, right to the left of the end will be one. Right above will be one. Then uh, diagonal will be two. In this case, it's not exact, but close. So it does the exact same thing uh, at the beginning. Then it is different once it gets around the corner and has two spaces to choose from. So here it puts them both on the open list, but then when it goes and tries to find the next uh, thing, it goes to that one because that has a lower sum of how far it has gone so far and uh, and uh, how to um, and the distance to the end. So there it was adding uh, eight um, eight plus two is ten, and then yeah, and then it it, it efficiently searches along the bottom, and then eventually gets to the end with way less, um, searching way less space. And then the third thing to talk about is dynamic programming, which pretty much makes a flat map, shows uh, where to go, assuming you're plunked down, or then you can be plunked down anywhere in the park and you will know where to go. And this uses a lot of CPU too, but it's all pre-compiled, we want to do it once. And so it pretty much says, uh, it says so if you're at the top, uh, go this direction. Uh, and so we'll do a little demo on this. So there. Okay. Get into the connected computer at home. And so here, this is what it looks like. So here, uh, just as a connecting computer at home, you can ignore that. Um, so, uh, so here. Uh, here is a maze. It's kind of like the one I showed you, and it, all the zeros represent places where it can go, and all the ones represent uh, places it can't go. And, uh, and then, if you simple search, it goes and tells you where to go. And this wasted a bunch of a little bit of CPU, but because it's very small, constrained search and space, it went just fine. But so here, this is this is what Acer looks like on that same thing. If and this is showing. Uh, uh, so, uh, this uh, this shows uh, um, 
where to go if, or, or these numbers are showing uh, the number, or the pretty much the cost to get to there in this example. And so here you can see it goes on, but never actually bothers spending CPU uh, calculating it for those spaces. So it never went there. So that make, means a lot more efficient and dynamic programming. Uh, this is what it looks like just to show I have, I have gotten it working. And this is homework from a class called Udacity. I'll talk a little bit about that later. Back to this. Now that's um, there right now. That's uh, that's a bit about uh, I'm planning doing path um, path planning. And so now I'll tell you a little bit about how I'm doing all this. It's about thirty seconds to go. You know. Um. And so uh, so um. So I have to bring Pathfinding next level using this thing, or I'll probably figure out some some other way to do outside. It doesn't seem like that will work so well. And then also I have to get everything to work with Ivy Lake. I have to actually really work really really hard to tune the parameters on that thing. And then I have to scale everything up and put it all together into one thing. And so pretty much if I'm a thir I'm a 13 year old, and pretty much if I can do this, you can do this too. So so I'll tell you a little bit about about Arduino, which here, this demo uses one, three out of my five demos use Arduinos. They're a great place to start and really cool. So, so they're not expensive, they have so many different people that use them, and they're all open source, and they're to program them in C++. They're pretty easy to program once you learn that. And they're all based on this at Mega, um, at Mega Processor, and that uh, processor is pretty good. You can do all sorts of stuff on it. And even if you want to, you can, or if you want to, you can even put the chip on, um, the bootloader on the chip, like, uh, um, like what I did here, um, on, on my uh, balancing platform. That it's not, I mean, it's it actually is just a the uh, processor on a breadboard, and and there are some other cool things like um, like be um, that I want to tell you about, which is like BeagleBoard is a small embedded Linux computer, and I've well, the BeagleBoard, XM, BeagleBone, they're pretty cool. I have them here. I can, if you want to um, do something. The Raspberry Pi is a $30, uh, $30 uh, little uh, computer, which is like a BeagleBoard, except smaller and cheaper. And gumsticks are these little uh, computers about the size of the gumstick, and basic stamp is pretty much, uh, um, it is not anything, it doesn't run Linux or anything, it just is a thing program basic. And it is very easy to program, and, and and a little about how I'm doing all this stuff. And so I'm, so I'm using Arduino for this. I'm using Open Connect, the software that I installed on my computer, so that I can interface it to the Connect. And LT Spice is a cool, uh, is a cool uh, uh, a CAD program that's all free. And CHK is this, you know, you can hack your camera and write scripts for it, and all sorts of cool stuff. And that one of the features of that is is you can trigger them over USB. And that's what I do on my project. And Fritzing is this uh, is a is a uh, a is a uh, pretty much a this program which allows you to go and put together your circuit and and then you can uh, and uh, it allows you to print out something with a laser printer and uh, on the special paper and then etch your own PCB. And it does all sorts of other stuff which I'm not talking about. And OpenCV is this uh, library called Open Computer Vision, which probably guess what it does. It is a bunch of a bunch of uh, things you can call for uh, um, for like doing slam and stuff, which is probably what I do with the uh, connect. And I don't have time to talk about that. But, um, GitHub is this other thing. I use it for tracking changes in my code all the time. And Eclipse is also is another code editing tool. And talk a little about Janeco. And they uh, and they're, they have all sorts of parts and stuff, like if you want to get some resistor, you can go to them and you can get it cheap. And and also they're selling more and more Arduinos. And SparkFun, they have all sorts of uh, of cool um, of, of things, and like they are selling Arduinos too. Cooking Hacks, they sell that stuff plus more unique things, like I got this 3G board from them and all sorts of stuff. And HSC, they have, uh, probably don't know, know of them, but that I got the motors for uh, you know, for the uh, um, for the uh, for the car thing I showed you in the beginning, 
from them, and they have accepting. And uh, and so Udacity um, is this, or I uh, that code I showed you for doing the pathfinding. I wrote that as homework for this. Uh, actually, those things I put it together, but uh, um, but it uh, they you can pretty much I, coincidentally right now they happen to be offering this class on how to make your own robotic car, and it's all free, all online, and and it's it's really cool. I recommend checking it out. And you may not think about it, but YouTube actually has videos on pretty much uh, on all the all the all, on stuff about electronics and all that stuff too. If you want to learn stuff there, Code Academy is a great place to uh, to learn about uh, JavaScript and how to write uh, that stuff. And the book you saw um, me holding in the beginning that was a book by Forrest Mims, and he does all these cool things like uh, like like 300 page books, and it's all handwritten the whole page, and it's uh, and it's really cool. And I mean, here's some other cool things. And all we do is this really cool physics program. And and then and also look up quadcopters if you don't already know about them. They're so cool. And and you might know about a bunch of this stuff on here. But also make um the make make magazine and also the Maker Fair. If you don't know about that, it's next month. It's so cool. Um, I recommend going to it. It is basically a bunch of makers and other people. Uh, they get together and build stuff and show off things they've built. And and Minecraft is this cool online multiplayer game that is all programmed in Java. And I've decompiled that and recompiled it and um, and made changes to it. And that's kind of fun. And there's my own server for that too. So multiple people can play together. And I'm pretty much done and thank you. Any questions for us? There's an online question uh, which I will probably try to add to. Using these dev systems must require some side of juggling to make them work together. How hard is that to do? And uh, I guess I, I, I would like maybe to, to add to that. Um, how do you even know which things to put together? Uh, it seems Maybe did you know how did you get started? How do people not get overwhelmed in the juggling? The thing is, so uh, so I have a beagle bone. I just decided to I would use that on something, and and a lot of stuff they had. Uh, so it comes with Python pre-installed, and that that pathfinding thing was written in Python. So I can just run that on here. In fact, it's touching off the web. I just run one terminal command. So that um so pretty much I use whatever I can find. Like I found. This and I decided it was cool, and then also I have a. And I just pretty much uh, have put together some stuff, and just if I if I find something that works, I use it. Anybody else have any questions? Okay. How do you decide on the two-wheel segway type balancing problem as opposed to uh, a system which you didn't have to deal with balance? Uh, I, I decided that um, that I use that because it also um, because it doesn't end up with, like it tipping over at least forward and backward, and then also it also also um, it makes it um, it it can turn on the spot and has other advantages like that, and also it just is a cooler too. <laughs> no, two wheels instead of four wheels. Some other questions. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, I'm sure you can make that into a question. <laughs> uh, Press the button, please. I would say what next would be interesting, given that you have all of these sort of capabilities under your belt. What might you like to do at your pretty much next level? Uh, pretty much, I, I'm. I'm just I just try to do whatever I like if I and this I decided it's a lot of fun so I'm I'm trying it out I'm doing as much as I can and and so pretty much I'm uh, I I'm pretty much uh, I just do whatever I think is fun yeah. and if I, if I find something well so I'll, let, let me challenge that okay so when I came to visit you um, I I heard you were spending some time with gaming. Right, and you talked about 
decompiling and fiddling around with making things. And there was a community of people that were doing that, that you discovered. So that makes a lot more sense to me than you just it comes out of nothing. Another example is um, the Maker Fairs coming up or the, um, the, the competition, the San Mateo Fair Fairs coming up. Something, or how much is these external uh, opportunities of communicating with other people or uh, somebody saying, hey, there's something that you could win or do well with uh, relative to just fiddling around on the web and, and, and following, you know, this minute's, uh, um, you know, direction that came to mind? Well, the thing is, you know, so uh, pretty much uh, my, my parents, they've, they've, they've bought me so many science fairs and everything, and I just, I just went in, and then, like, I'm like, okay, I'll, I have to choose something cool and do it for that. And then, and it's like here, um, and I chose. Um, so I, I was interested in in um, in uh, in OpenCV, and I decided I wanted to do something with it. And I found the robotic, um, and I liked all this robotic, all these robotic cars, and how they um, and how Google's doing all that stuff. And uh, and I I decided I would have fun and and try doing that. And that's and this is what came out of that. So I have another question in this direction. So if, if some other parents happen to be watching this, and because there's more parents watching this than students do, what would you tell those parents that they could do that maybe you've seen your parents do that, that would encourage you to try going to these science fairs or, or looking up this open CV camera, uh, um, you know, basically library of camera uh, routines and playing with that? How, how would you keep the, the, them, get them to focus their, their kid on, on doing that instead of getting totally frustrated and throwing their computer across the room uh, 10 minutes into that activity? Uh, I guess I'd say uh, make sure they're having fun, like find something that they like doing in that, and like add, just make sure they're having fun doing it, and, and um, I like, like, uh, like find, relate it somehow to something that they like doing. And then also maybe you can, uh, I guess, uh, I'm, I started homeschooling because I was so interested in this stuff. And, and actually, I didn't really want to at first, and, and it has been so much fun. I started, and I started homeschooling this year, really. So. And how, how would you uh, relate how this year's gone rel uh, with your homeschooling, this new homeschooling thing this year, relative to in the past years, just in terms of, uh, you know, structuring your life and, 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 and getting things done and feeling connected to the projects you're uh, involved with? So uh, pretty much, uh, pretty much uh, I liked, uh, or I've had, uh, or, or so pretty much I've, uh, all the, uh, or, or, yes, that question. Just, 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 just thinking about, um, or, or, uh, you know, how, how do you feel about the, um, trying to do these things now that you're homeschooled, uh, okay. relative to uh, you know fitting it in between yeah, things, so and 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 also what are you missing being homeschooled? So I'm missing being homeschooled. I'm missing being around uh, uh, all my friends at my at my or I used to go to school every single day and like like I get to uh, be with them and talk with them and all that. That's pretty much what I'm missing. But then also I get to play with all this stuff. Like you now I actually. Like I, this talk would be impossible if I had normal school, and they wouldn't have enough time. Pretty much, I've I've had a lot more time, so I can I can actually get the connecting working. It took me forever to install those libraries. Like try, and then it, something would get corrupted, and I'd have to restart. So when I last saw you, um, I've only been to, a, to to visit him with you once. I'll get to you in a second, Mark. Um, and the connect was not part of your life. And in fact, you were not working on this robot as much. So it's very impressive. I just want to, uh, looks to me like hundreds of hours of work has gotten done. And I especially love this, this search algorithm, this optimization search algorithm, because I watched a bunch of projects at Stanford a couple weeks ago where they used the Connects. It was a whole class on Connects. And people had tremendous performance problems because they had not had the idea of trying to optimize or improve their search algorithm. So I'm very proud of you for that. Um, uh, and then I guess so that that's all I want to say. I, Martin had a question over here. This is kind of a two-part question, and you may see the connection. Are you involved with scouting at all? Uh, no. But one of the, the reason I ask is there's a, as a part of scouting you end up trying to become an eagle scout, and one 
making contributions uh, or an Eagle Scout is making some kind of societal contribution or community contribution or activity. And so looking at the things you've learned and are able to do, have you considered combining them into solving some problem like, I don't know, it could be home automation, energy management, That's building management? Actually, uh, kind of. So, like, I when I was doing all those all those uh, projects before, they probably noticed they all have a theme. They're all solar power and trying to make that more efficient. I had kind of, uh, kind of um, like, or I kind of was trying to uh, make a more efficient uh, charger for solar panels and all that. And so I, I'm looking out in this audience and I see that we have a much broader range in in ages here. We we've got about 60 years of age difference in this in this room here. Um, I'm wondering if any of the people, the, 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 the people that are the youngest people in the room, are, do you guys have anything that you want to uh, ask or say to Eric? I, I just see several. Um, is it no? Is it, if any. Just, just any thought? You want to just... Uh, well, pretty much I... Pretty much I... I, I Leon just, has asked this question. Pretty much, I, I, I just, I just have. It just has been. I've had fun, and then also, also, I, I just when I was young, I thought it was just so cool. These things like, with all, um, with like how my computer can do its, um, and or everything my computer can do and all that stuff. And then also, I've been more intrigued by 3D graphics lately, and been um, more interested in that. And push the button. Push the button. Hold the button down. No. The, the, the Udacity class by Sebastian Sloan is certainly somebody who's been interesting to you. Yeah. Um, so at this point, we are at 2.30. And I would like, if there's one more question, maybe, and otherwise, yes, just one second. And then we'll move out into the hallway where we have some, some uh, posters that he's made over the years, and also some uh, cookies and, and some soda. So one more question. Uh, pretty much, I've I've been uh, a lot of, pretty much a lot of ways. I've read it in books. I've I've looked on the internet. I've I've also um, I've also like the Udacity class that was that came just like right at the perfect time. It it was um, and that's how I learned. I learned all the pathfinding and all that stuff and about SLAM and particle filters. I learned all that stuff from that class. And then also pretty much uh, also. Um, knowledge comes with doing stuff too. Is like you'd done the stuff for a while, then you kind of know a bit about it too. And just I've just if you search the internet, you can find so many things. Okay, we have one tiny little question left. Oh, I'm sorry. We have really you know time for only one more. Yeah. Well, so kind of, I think, or so, um, uh, so pretty much, uh, the parents they uh, they have uh, always encouraged me and uh, and thought um, and and it was a good idea and also uh, just let and like they they now have pretty much bought me a whole uh, I pretty much have like uh, uh, electronics lab too and they've kind of bought me a lot of stuff too and have encouraged me and and helped me learn all this stuff too. And like my dad, he found the Dasky class. And uh, and maybe, maybe his father gave him um, a, a one, a, one uh, a, a small computer that he'd made that had a lot of I.O. on it, that he had a language for talking about it called Sunspots a long time ago. And maybe, maybe his parents are a little involved in some of this mentoring. Um, is there, I guess there was one more question I wanted to make sure. Just push the button, please. You have to push. Yeah, just hold that on. Uh, okay. Just um, I, my question was related to the resources. I was wondering if you had considered a place like a tech shop, or and, and you sort of answered that by saying you have your own electronics um, lab going. Have you, have you considered? So I've I've considered doing that because like you can't well like three D printers are so cool, but still you can't really buy one. Uh, they're still so expensive, but so 
pretty much uh, I've 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 uh, gone um, I've looked around and I've I have considered but also also because I just turned 13 a lot of those things you have to be over 13 so I haven't really been able to <laughs> yeah they keep they keep putting time challenges in front of us okay well thank you very much and uh, please meet us out in the hallway for, for more discussion Oh, that's wonderful. Perfect.